so here's the system that we're taking a look at today. Uh, this is a cooler, and as you can see, it's running about 45 degrees. She said that they normally like it around 36, so more or less 10 degrees warmer than it should be. First thing we checked for, made sure that there was no ice in the unit. Unit is not froze up, so we know that the defrost circuit is probably working fine. But we'll also check over the defrost timer, make sure it doesn't look like it's stuck or something. So this system is running R22. You can see that on the low side we're running 20 PSI, which is negative six for our vapor saturation temperature. We want this number to be about 20 degrees lower than the box temperature. So negative six is more than 20 degrees lower than the 35-ish that we want to be running at. That number can vary a little bit too, depending on the temperature in the cooler. We want this number to be a little bit higher though, more like positive 10 when we're trying to get the cooler to run at like 35. And then you can see our high side, and I put both hoses on, because you should always put both on if you're gonna be adding any refrigerant to the system. So that looks good. You never want that to be more than two, uh, 30 degrees above ambient. Let's have a look at our superheat. You can see we have a high superheat, 63. And our subcooling is actually about where it's supposed to be. Nine degrees of subcooling. We don't want usually more than 10 degrees of subcooling. Um, but we should be able to add some refrigerant and be fine. This thing does have a receiver on it. Hold some extra refrigerant. You can see it's clearly marked R22. Also got another tag over there saying that it's R22. has kind of just a low stream of liquid running through it. Sometimes sight glasses can be a little weird. They can just be like a low flow sight glass instead of a actually low system. So you have to keep an eye on that and only fill based off of the actual pressures, the superheat readings and the subcooling readings. Don't rely on the sight glass. But the sight glass is also a helpful indicator to confirm what we're seeing. And I believe this system is low. We're going to add in a little R22 and see what it does. We're just going to bleed a little air out. So we're going to open this valve, make sure these are closed before we open it. And flip the tank over. Thing is zeroed. Valve's all open. So now we can go ahead and add. Looks like our subcooling actually came down. The way that you get your subcooling is by measuring the pressure of the high side and the temperature of the gases coming out of the coil. So your liquid saturation temperature minus your actual temperature, which is 76. So 76 off of our 85 gives us our 8.7. So that's how that works. We're gonna go ahead and add some into the low side now. Should be able to see it run. Gonna be slow adding because that tank's really cold right now. Almost added two pounds. You can see our superheat is coming down. Our subcooling number has been fluctuating between eight and eleven. Sight glass still has liquid, but it's not bubbling. It's just slow. So that looks good. That's where we want stuff to be running. Let's have a look, those are our raw temperatures of that line and where it comes out of the condenser over there, here and here. Liquid saturation temperature, 103. It's pretty warm in this room because all that heat kind of stays right up between these beams up here. So I'm kind of not surprised to see that our liquid saturation temperature is that high. And this number should come down as the box comes down. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the sight glass. Um, you notice that it's just flowing like half full, but it doesn't have a lot of bubbles sweeping through it. That's why we put the high and the low side gauges on and our temperature probes um, a foot away from the compressor going in to measure our superheat and also to measure our subcooling on the outlet of the coil. Um, because oftentimes there'll be a little bit of 
air inside the sight glass. It's not actually air, it's vaporized refrigerant. And that doesn't always mean that it's undercharged. So there's a few different things that can cause bubbling in the sight glass. If there's bubbles that are like actually sweeping through the sight glass, like you can see them coming in, that means that the refrigerant is flashing. So it can be from an extreme pressure drop or if the pressure is too low. So if there's no subcooling in the condensing coil, that means that the refrigerant is able to flash back into a vapor with the liquid and get swept along down toward the expansion valve or whatever metering device is in the unit. So if the refrigerant is actually flashing and you see bubbles being swept along, that's different than if there's just liquid flowing through the sight glass, which is what we were seeing today, which is why we needed to check both the high and the low sides to make sure that it was actually low on refrigerant and not just uh, looking like it was low. That's why you always put the gauges on and don't just fill based on the sight glass. It's general best practices to avoid using the sight glass really for anything except for an extra indication of what's going on in the system. Um, if there is a filter dryer right before the sight glass and that filter dryer starts to plug up, as the refrigerant is swept through the filter dryer and goes through that restricted media inside the filter dryer, it can also cause a pressure drop right after the filter dryer. So it's high pressure coming in, pressure drops that can cause the liquid to flash into a vapor and bubble. So if there's a lot of bubbling in a sight glass in a system that is working fine, that is charged up properly, it could mean that the liquid line filter dryer is beginning to plug up or that there's other, some other restriction in the line set there. So anyway, we're gonna go back in, make sure that the system's cooling down, but I think we got this one figured out. That was good. Yep, it's getting cold in here. Nice, so that's where we wanna be. I did do a general leak inspection on the unit. Not on the, not super extensive because I'm guessing it just loses a tiny bit over years, but just want to make sure there's no big ones. We're now going to take the high side hose off and I always use a strap because it's way easier. Let me show you what I'm talking about. still have high pressure in here so we're going to open this. It's going to let all that liquid back into the low side. Perfect VSAT for a cooler.